It's been a while since our last episode, but in a year where the the Beatles can somehow release their final song 53 years after they broke up, we we can come back after a few months for one last podcast. That's right. <laughs> it's the last waltz for the vibe cast, a podcast celebrating the fun, the music, the fans, and the musicians from the decades-long history. Yes, that's right. Decades-long decades. history into oh, the third God. decade. Of the Philadelphia-based band Chico's Vibe, I'm your host, John Parkinson, here, as always, with producer extraordinaire Matt Kelly. Matt's had his work cut out for him for this episode, because just like the Beatles, just like the isolated John Lennon's vocals, Matt has created a digital vocal library of Dennis Chiquino, so that everything you hear today is not actually Chico, but his AI persona. Oh, that's awesome. That's fucking great. (laughs) It's incredible already, Matt. (laughs) So isolated that, got it already. But Matt, about the podcast has been quite a ride. I I think I'm biased, but I think we've left a legacy over. This is our 22nd episode over our 22 episodes. I think it's a, a hilarious digital library, a time capsule documenting uh, the Chico's vibe experience. My mind, it's essential. Delco Philly listening. Uh, yeah. We we do have we do have the issue. That based on our listenership, which Matt will talk about a little bit, it's clear that most of Philly and Delco hasn't figured that out yet. <laughs> not yet. But I'm not worried about that. I'm not concerned. I'm also not well, concerned. Well, you know, an artist is never appreciated in his oh, lifetime. So. Oh, it's I'm like sorry, you read you... my notes. This is fantastic. That's that's why I'm, okay. I'm confident that this podcast will have a new birth of freedom because there, there are examples of artists... Who weren't fully appreciated until well after they produced their greatest art. Matt, I'm optimistic that in years to come, the world will rediscover the Vibecast in numbers greater than ever before. Because we have with us today the the Johann Sebastian Bach, the Vincent Van Gogh, and the F. Scott Fitzgerald of Delco <laughs> Podcasting right in front of us. From Chico's Vibe, Dennis Chiquino, John Gabbard. Who would be and who? Ed would you have guys to be Van Gogh. Look for who's yeah, missing an ear. The, who's missing an ear? Be Bach, you can be uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I want to be the, uh, Fitzgerald. Yeah. Who's all, who, who of us is only using one side of their headphones? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> 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 so how, have you guys been? how was your Christmas? So we're recording this yeah. a few days after Christmas. Still going to release on the 31st, Matt, maybe? Yeah, this will come out on, on New Year's Eve. Ed, so how does that work? He's asking about Christmas, so behind time when we jump in well time's a circle so (laughs) if we come around again if i if you and i run fast enough we'll be back at last week so we can do christmas again i'm not sure if you saw the documentary superman but all you have to do is fly the opposite direction of the world and it turns back turns like chair that's what that chair song's about how you do it right there goes ed Uh (laughs) oh my god somebody said superman Oh, oh, oh boy. Boy. there we go. Everything's gonna be okay. Hey Matt, is it too early for the numbers? Or talk yeah, about let's what we got? let's do it. So we're, Matt, Matt's done a Matt's able to track what our <laughs> listenership numbers are. So he, right, he knows what our most right. popular episodes were. He also knows what locations. I guess it's based on like the IP address of whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of people listen from right. from where they listen. So uh, could you say, okay. "Yes, Matt, get the numbers, get the numbers." Get right. the- <laughs> So, yeah. so what do we want first? We have three options here. Popular, most popular episodes, specific cities, or countries. Mm. Go give all three. But yeah. where do you want me to start here? Start most with popular episodes. Yeah. Popular episodes. All right. So the top five episodes. Number five, Run Around Sue. Wow. What mm. the, uh, wow. Okay. What was Run Around Sue episode? Shh. She on. was the town bicycle. Everybody had a ride. <laughs> While you're looking up who was in the Run Around Sue episode, yeah, number going. four, Can't Stop the Feeling, Justin Timberlake. Ooh, okay, wow. cool. Wow. Number three, More Today Than Yesterday. That was that, the Rick uh, Anthony episode. That was the Rick Anthony episode. Uh-oh. But Previously we, the so number one episode. He's, he's down, down to three. We, we, we determined that it was Uh-oh. him listening 6,000 times, though. Remember? Now, <laughs> right. now here's, here's the big question. Number two. The live episode about Golden Slumbers. <laughs> no, no way. No, the live. Oh, that can't God. be right. That doesn't even factor in. That doesn't, yeah. that doesn't factor in our Facebook views, right? Or does it? I didn't even factor in the Facebook views. I think if I factored uh, those in, that would go up to you number know, one. The one people, episode I wanted to be erased from people, the internet. <laughs> people always do slow down at a car wreck, you know. And then is. number one. Because most people always start at the beginning. Silly love songs. That's, first uh, episode. That's, a, that's a good episode. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. 
as far as uh, countries, um, the biggest one was the United States. They Woo. made up 68% of you, your listenership. 68%. Okay. 68%. Holy percent. smokes. Now, wait a minute. That leaves, what, 32% in other countries? Other now, there's countries. a lot of 1%, so I'm just going to do the ones that weren't 1%. <laughs> okay. But the United Kingdom made up 5% of your listenership. Uh, I do say what I do here. Wow. That, <laughs> that, that Chico and that Jonathan getting into it. Germany made up funny. 3%. This ah. is weird. And Canada made up two percent, and then all of the other countries oh, sorry. in well, the in the globe were one percent. Give me a couple one percent. Yeah, what, what's some of the? I don't have it pulled up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did see that one of our random top cities was in Singapore. So, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Whoa. guys, we're yeah. going to Germany. <laughs> this is it. And we're going as, to Germany. <laughs> and as far as cities, they hit the UK and then Germany. Now, <laughs> cities, it gets even more granular, right? Uh -oh. Like it's so there's wait, even it, more one percent. I got right. a technicality here. Right. Singapore used to be a part of the United Kingdom. It's not anymore. Right? It's not anymore. Correct. Oh, okay, so right. I mean, they didn't right. cross. They over. play us when they came, people. Our number one city was Philadelphia, <laughs> but it was only ten percent of the overall listenership. <laughs> wait, Philadelphia. What, huh. I missed that you one. Our we, number one city, city was Philadelphia, Philadelphia, but with only 10% of the overall listenership. <laughs> uh, second place was Havertown with 5%. Yeah. Uh, third <laughs> was New York City. Yeah. Wow. Hey. 3%. Yeah. Then it was just a lot of like Bryn Mawr, Aston, Brooklyn. Like it was like yeah, every individual yeah, yeah, city. Sure. But two that jumped out at me in our top 10 was Seattle, Washington, and Washington, D.C. Wow. Were among Excellent. our top 10 cities that people listen See, to I the show. I told you we should have yeah. talked more politics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So this may be our last domestically recorded episode, but we. Maybe we need to go over to Germany. <laughs> Listen, we need, you're talking about TV show finales. Let's be fair. We, a lot of those shows come back 10, 15 that's years true, later. That's true. <laughs> we, need to, we need to overdub our episodes like in German. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've never been to Singapore. That Once might be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So nothing like, in Norway. You, nothing from Norway or Denmark or Sweden. Not that I you're, saw in the top 10. Your legacy isn't as strong there as you can't believe it. <laughs> 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 but uh i like to give our listeners thank you matt for those statistics yeah but before we, before we uh, jump yeah. in and, matt, into some other excellent. stuff that's excellent just a little heads up on what uh we're going to talk about today so the one thing since is this is our last episode i also thought and i anticipate it'll be a great last episode maybe not but i thought it'd be a great last episode we could talk about in the tv and movie world some significant final episodes that oh, you guys yeah. Ooh, yeah. either like or know or even hated mm -hmm. um then a segment uh we're calling vibecast bootlegs where we review episode ideas or segments that were considered but rejected for the mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um so and you guys can throw in ideas that you may have had or or just even in your head that we never went through then uh since rosalita was our chosen song from the set last mm -hmm. uh Thought we'd talk a little bit about our the band's uneasy relationship, uh, the uneasy relationship between Chico's vibe and Bruce Springsteen. Uh, not that Bruce knows, but <laughs> uh, that's then we'll what talk, makes it uneasy. Then he we'll talk, yes, even, he yeah. doesn't know. He doesn't even. Well, it's, I yeah. think it's. It, we'll see when we discuss. Then we'll talk about Rosalita a little bit, uh, and then I have two ideas potentially for a wrap up: either the challenges of aging and and being in a band, or favorite moments from the podcast or we could do both depending so wait, on what was the second one what favorite we... moments oh, from the podcast okay. so with that I, let's jump into uh some famous famous final episodes absolutely mm -hmm. yes good or bad so there's there's tv and there's movie i was gonna yeah. let ed run with the movie stuff <laughs> <laughs> i got a couple movie things you know yeah, okay some shows you know when they end they don't know their ending so maybe they, they don't yeah, wrap up right, well right. but then there's some shows mm -hmm. that have well, there's two huge things, uh, if I may also yes, answer the definitive TV one to, that I can remember what, that we watched live was the final MASH episode. Did you I was on, watch okay. it? I, I'm trying to think what grade, because I, I think that was 82 or 83 that that happened, the final episode aired. So it was one of those things where uh, like watched it with the whole family and, and, and like talked about it at school the next day. Yeah. Even though oh. I was a little young, first run, I was a little young to get that get show. It, yeah. To get like, 
I remember that it would confuse me because I would hear laughed, laughing on some episodes while on other ones there wouldn't be. Oh, the know? last sound. Like yeah. one, I remember one episode, a guy stepped on a landmine and there was like no laughter in that episode. And then there's another one where Klinger's like in a dress or it's Klinger, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So that was the big one. And movie wise for me, because I was four years old when the original Star Wars came out, it was the first movie I saw in the theater. Yeah. I was uh, about six years old when Empire came out. So Jedi came out in 83. So that was the first thing for me in my life, a conclusion of some kind. Something, yeah. Even though they're still making movies they're today. They're still doing them, though. But That's, in that yeah. original arc, that original story, like seeing a beginning, middle, and end, that was a first for me. And mm-hmm. to confirm, it How was did it February end? 28th, 1983, is the yeah. final episode of MASH. Of MASH. And I remember, I, did, I actually binged the whole show this year for the first time. Oh, wow. Uh, the creator said that, the only way that they were ever going to do the show was that if they had to have a laugh track, it could only be used in non-serious circumstances. So even if they were cracking jokes in an operation room, they were like, we will not have a laugh track while right. someone's lying dead on a... Oh, so, it was, oh, oh. so it was in specific Actually, areas Yeah, it was specific episode. areas. Yeah. If there was yeah. something that was showing the horrors of war, they didn't want the laugh track anywhere near it. Right. Mm. So, I thought another like important aspect of that show, and I, w- I wasn't like a huge fan of MASH, but... Nobody ever talked about the Korean War. True. You know, until true. MASH. And then you got one aspect of it. You yeah. know, you got the, the what do they That's call it? That's a really them? good point. Hospital. What did MASH stand for? Mobile, uh, mobile Army uh, Surgical Hospital. Yeah. yeah. And, wow. uh, Very good guy. I mean, that was. Thank you. Those guys went through <laughs> hell over there, but yeah. it's, they called it the Forgotten War. Yeah. But MASH kind of brought it. Now, least. hilariously, though, on MASH. The Korean War was what six six years, I think it was fifty to fifty five. Yeah, thought. so five years. Mash ran for eleven seasons and had a Christmas episode every year. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But how long? But, but, but that's here's true. The, how long were the Sweat Hawks in high school? <laughs> <laughs> the Sweat Hawks were in high school for like twelve years. So you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Wow. Same thing. Yeah, but some things pop into your mind. There, one of them that I was very disappointed with. Ending was Seinfeld. Seinfeld, that, yeah. That final episode was disappointing yeah, to me. Yeah, it was. Under- You're a, it was a huge Seinfeld fan. What was the, the last episode, and why were you? They they were Jerry, uh, Jerry. His show got signed. They were going out to Los Angeles, I think, right? Yeah. And their plane took off and had mechanical failure, so they had to land. I think they landed in like the middle of nowhere. Yeah, like somewhere like America. some small town, <clears throat> and it was all the main characters you know the yeah. jerry elaine yeah, yeah, yeah. uh george and uh what's his name Kramer. Kramer. Gilligan. Yeah. and they're walking through a town and this heavy real heavy guy gets robbed and that was when the law the samaritan law was placed at that time mm-hmm. the, the good samaritan, good samaritan law samaritan. like you had to interact yeah so they're watching them and they're and they're kind of laughing because you know well they get arrested for that and they get thrown in jail there and then they have to you know they they go to court and yeah and it was weird like the, and it was i mean it was ingenious where they brought all the characters back as witnesses character witnesses yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. everyone that they burned in one way or another that's true oh. i think you it know? was i think it's less bad in retrospect now but yeah at the time i remember yeah. watching it even at the time as a kid being like this sucks this yeah. is a terrible way for the <laughs> and show to end so they they <laughs> they get thrown in jail there and that's how it ends oh wow they're and just I sitting in the jail yeah, like, but it kind of left it it kind of left it open like no because yeah, it was only for okay. like a year they yeah. were gonna be in jail for a year together <laughs> so and the last i heard there was talk that they may be doing like a a a two episode thing or I don't know yeah. something like that well, didn't they kind of have a, a reunion on Curb yeah so that was, that was, they was did. Like a season of Curb reunion. where he was writing the yeah. reunion yeah. Se- right. season of right. Seinfeld yeah ah. so that was sort of a do over yeah. for them in a sense <laughs> I mean right. it is it is funny in retrospect to make the final episode just an hour reminder that these are all terrible people yes. by bringing back every like they hit every episode it is every character they've ever wronged yes in nine seasons it comes of back, television it comes back in the court and then the other one for me that i hated the ending was the brady bunch 
How that? <laughs> that had a finale. That had a finale. I don't remember. Did they have a finale? The one where the girl uh, got. I don't remember. Know. See, the last season had the, uh, the kid Oliver. Yeah. With... Yes. <laughs> and they died. They died. Was, they you know died they Greg's in, hair uh, got dyed some different yeah, color yeah, yeah. or orange Oliver, or something. Oliver. They know. ended up in space. I think. Oh, Oliver no, and did they? Oliver the Brady and Sam Bunch the... ended up in space. <laughs> yeah. Oliver and, and Sam it... the Butcher were stuck in orbit. <laughs> You're making this up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he was and dead. Alice, Alice had Alice to give them instructions him. how to land yeah, from, from control. Him. Alice killed Sam. Yeah. Oh, my God. Tell, I, I'm going to write that episode. <laughs> so, yeah. so the girl, fix you'll it. See. it wasn't like the, the little girl got pregnant. What? No. <laughs> I think <laughs> Cindy, Cindy was got her. pregnant. That's no. how the Brady Bunch. I mean, that was yeah. a Mommy, joke down the a little club. And a minus me. Is that how you remember it? <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I kind of remember like a joke yeah, I, around a little. I mean, I think I back of like and it has a plus. Like what? Mork, the show, like Mork and Ork. Like I have Mork, no idea. Mork and, Mork and Mindy. Mork and Mindy. Mork, from Mork. Mork and Ork. Mork from Mork. <laughs> that was Mork the and Mindy. Mork I don't. Mork. I, I can't even remember how no, if that just it, ended. It, yeah, you know, he just became. It ended after they had Jonathan Winters as as their son Mirth. He oh, was yeah. born because they aged backwards on Ork. Is it Ork? Yeah, more yeah. from, from work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they age backwards. So right. he 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 gave birth to a giant egg in the living room, oh, Robin geez. Williams, and it hatched, I and it was Jonathan remember. Winters. And it, Jonathan can, Winters. Yeah. How, yeah. how do you how do you even know this? You were like <laughs> I do remember that, and he was on there because Robin Williams was Jonathan Winters was his idol. It was. Yeah. Yes. Robin Williams loved Jonathan call him, Winters. Calls him Buddha. And uh, yeah. was it uh, <laughs> Gary, the guy who who did a uh, uh, Happy Days, Gary? Um, Oh, Marshall. Uh, Marshall. Marshall. Yeah. He said he added a camera on that show because Robin Williams would just go off oh, and, oh, and, right, right, and right, he'd be right. like, did you get it? And he goes, get what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, how about The Sopranos? Do you guys remember that? Is yes. Well, it's one of my things. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I thought the, the ending on that was fitting. I, I, I yeah, remember seeing I mean, it. remember yeah. thinking it was weird, but I, I like just remember back, it was, don't if, stop. If you, Boom. Yeah. If you go back a few more, Bobby Bacala. Says, I think when you get whacked, everything just goes black. Yeah, yeah there's I, in yeah. retrospect, so like, there's a lot of there's, hints. There's these hints, right. yeah, and that's there's what I I think he was whacked. He definitely and that was definitely how, was yeah. how he experienced it. It just it turns off like a light. Yeah, yeah. I was, even dis- I was disappointed with it. Were you completely? I mean, Tony wasn't he like stuck in a friggin' motel room? No, they were in no, a no, they were in a diner with a the diner. family, right? You're thinking about when he had his. He got shot. Yes. Yeah. And he he there were like two episodes where he was in a dream. Yeah. And it was a weird. Wait, game. I remember right, that right. stuff when he got shot. Yeah, but then the final wasn't episode wasn't he on the run. FBI was you know was on to him. Was he wasn't him. on the run, he told, but he, he his lawyer said it's not looking good because it was a yeah. gun. They found that gun. Yes. When he ran away from Johnny Sack, when Johnny yeah, Sack got arrested, but, he lost the gun and a kid found it. And but yeah, like that, that was that but, was why. He but was then going there down. was an informed the kid somebody, shot the somebody president turned. with the gun, right? Right. But it had just been after there was like a mob war, um, yeah. and the guy at the counter is looking at him weird too. Yeah. So like, the, in the episode, he's every time the like the door opens, Tony looks up. Yeah. And you see from his perspective. Yeah. So you see when his wife and AJ. Anytime somebody comes in, yeah. he, he hears the bell. He looks up, and then Meadow comes in. You hear the doorbell, metal come in, and he looks up, and it goes, it goes to black. black. So that's his perspective now. Yeah, right? it's black. But. You know that that show had some. First of all, annoying characters like uh, Janice. The, number Jan- one, yes, I mm-hmm. hated. She was a great came, annoying character. Came on the, the 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 picture. I was like, not her again. But then it had some like awesome characters. That you just fucking hated because yep. they were so good, like Richie Upreal. Oh, oh yes. Oh my God. Couldn't was... wait to, when he got shot. I was oh, like, yes. God. Janice shot him, right? Yeah, she did. <laughs> he he, pun- say, he now punched go her bring in the me face. my dinner. And she just like, <laughs> bang. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. They had some of those kind of characters. And the, and the, All right. Now, here's my last episode. I was yeah. going to get into the Sopranos a little bit, but we just did. It was Game of Thrones oh, when Khaleesi, on her last dragon that was still alive, went and just torched the, the entire freaking town of yeah. the, where those, what, what were the other family's name? The La- Lannisters. The Lannisters. Yeah. Yeah. She torched the whole town it back a, and the, forth the, like she's cutting grass. That whole know, last zoom, season zoom, was, zoom, was, zoom, was zoom. terrible. 
I'm like, holy and, shit, I didn't expect it to end that way. And boom, that was it. Yeah. Corn. The, um, I think mm-hmm. two of the ones that I always, I, I've never watched either one of these shows, but I always hear them in the conversation of infamously great and infamously bad. Uh, infamously great is the last episode of New Heart. Oh, where mm. he wakes up in bed on the set of the Bob Newhart show. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 And then next to Suzanne Plachette. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the infamously bad is the St. Elsewhere ending where everything that you've watched is revealed to just be You're in a an autistic globe. child oh, right. staring at a yeah. snow globe. I forgot about that. I, never, <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't watch. I've never seen either. No. Neither. You know, the whole person. Game of Thrones thing, even though I even though I know it diverged from the books, like he didn't finish the books. Yeah. They, well, they could have fixed. They could have fixed thing. all that from a pacing point of view. The last episode. I agree. The last been, season's fine if it was two la- or three seasons. Last episode. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Last episode should have been. Um, what? You ever see the guy who does pitch meetings? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He does the best thing about yeah. the last season. I think well, the last episode should have been that army of the dead attacking. Yeah. That's how it should have ended. Yeah. Everything was out of order in the had, final yeah, season yeah. too. It was weird. Yeah. But you know there was a lot of twists and turns that you didn't expect in that show, like. Uh, Ned oh. Stark, the, you know, yeah, Ned, and then the, and the Red Wedding right in front was of the his daughter and all that kind. Yeah. Of well, stuff. I first started watching it. Parky goes, uh, d- "Don't get too attached to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you know, don't get too, you know." And then Jamie getting his hand chopped oh, off, yeah. you know, having to depend on the big female uh, yeah. knight. There was all kind of crazy shit. Yeah, but, Brianna of Tarth. Yeah. yeah, but that last—I mean, that last season saw some great episodes because I think the episode before the big fight, where it's just everybody hanging out waiting for the war to happen, is like one of the best episodes of television. Oh, I I've agree. Ever that seen. is very well written, paced. Yeah, yeah like yeah. it's just that. Yeah, they tried to tell like three seasons of television and six episodes, and that's not well. <laughs> I, I say yeah. I say we're in the golden age of television now because television quality has exceeded films. They also like, don't have to I try to, to go fit to... twenty two episodes into a season. They can just do a good <laughs> six yeah, episodes. And call well, it a someone day. like me, I would go. I would be like an event person, see a big event movie in the theater. But like that, honestly, is happening on That's the true. streaming level now. Like, I mean, I still love to see movies in the theater, but the quality of like oh, cinematography, I, I uh, yeah. you know, co- like I'm glad it went that way because like I, I remember when I was in college in the '90s and everything was syndicated. Like the quality of all the shows really took a dip, mm-hmm. you know. No, so, it's, I well, agree with you. you know, Plus, yeah. you know, you got these gigantically huge screens now. And you're yeah, at home. And whatever, and you just lay back, and you're almost like in the theater. I'm eating the whole time. I'm ordering DoorDash. I got pizzas coming <laughs> in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, guy, and you guys watch Succession? Yeah, well, I watched some. I haven't I started didn't... it yet. Oh, but yeah. I haven't that. watched it. It was pretty good. Last part of this season. Pretty good ending. Um, <laughs> nobody talked about Gunsmoke. <laughs> I was going to ask for the rifleman. I was going to ask you about um, that. Was one of the longest oh, running TV shows. They all run on Me TV. Yeah. They do all day long. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the fugitive. Hillbill. Did you see the fugitive when it was on? Yes. Okay. Um, that was like my young television days, and uh, that was around when the original Peyton Place was out. And uh, I remember my parents wouldn't let me watch Peyton Place. You know, oh, too was, racy controversial mm. and this and that it was nothing if you watch it today it's like laughable uh mia faro that's where she got yeah, her she start, got start she's yeah. just little skinny waifs you look like twiggy um but no and i wasn't allowed to watch the fugitive in the beginning but i started sneaking that one <laughs> and you know i came <laughs> I, the, I came around the, to the that. fugitive resulted in a long period of time of Network staying away from arc story arcs because apparently in when it went into reruns in syndication it would drop in popularity each time it would show and the big reason they thought was because the final episode with the one arm people man, knew where it was going people it, it does uh, yeah. have a resolution yeah so there's a period between that and like the Norman Lear shows where it's just all right. Let's have this half hour self-contained. Oh, that you know, makes sense. You know, if you didn't see yesterday's or you don't see tomorrow's, you could still, oh, yeah. You know, whereas in a show like that, 
there was this he was going from town to town oh yeah, that know, makes sense and now yeah. it's kind of reversed because every show now has it was a frustrating the show within the season and arc over the whole uh, well that's what, like every week you're you're you know he's almost, he was brilliantly portrayed almost, too that, yeah. that actor figures it like, out or almost gets it and then you know he doesn't well like, that's why the uh the Richard prisoner Jansen, was is like looked at as like one of the shows that kind of like changed television in the 60s if you watch yeah. the prisoner it's just a tight 12 episode yeah. show but like if you you can't watch it out of order you have to watch yeah, those watch I mean, that episodes. might be why I, I have found the prisoner impenetrable but i've never watched the whole thing in yeah a, in a it's so good <laughs> mission, <laughs> mission impossible was groundbreaking too in the 60s uh just a quick ad not an ad but my friend Introduced me to Pluto TV. Right. Oh, I'm a big uh, fan of Pluto oh TV. Oh, my yeah. God. What an app. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll literally just, just have a channel that's just 24 just hours a day of, like, s- supermarket sweep. <laughs> There's one. Ed might like this one. I liked the very last episode of Quantum Leap, the original oh, Quantum Leap. Where'd he leap to? I could see it. He, like they it. leaped into a bar. He was yeah. into a bar. and uh, She goes by playing? No. <laughs> um, the bartender was uh, D Dave from Animal House. Oh, my God. That's right. I remember his name. Uh, he's the in actor's so name. many, many things. Yeah, that he's, guy. he's all, he's over, all the over the place. place. Do you remember I mean, what it said on the screen at the, on the last episode, though? What's no, that? what did it say? It literally says, let me see if I can never, pull it up. He never it, returned he home. He never returned home. <laughs> right. Because oh. he just kept leaping. But it, it kind of, if I can remember it, he kind of the the bartender kind of tells him like, you know this you you were changing the world I, I, like kind of like he said y- you, you were, feel you think you just changed a handful of people's lives yeah he says well those people have changed Chain- people's lives oh and it he, was like a like, chain it really reaction. is a wonderful yeah. life you've you've so- done far more <laughs> than, yeah yeah. yeah. And, and there I were think people he told in the... him that you're the one who's in control of your leaping. Yes. You're the one who's doing it. Yeah. And so he has a choice to kind of stop leaping. Right. And the last frame says he never returned. He home. never returned. So like, he I got an ask Stan and, and, and Gabby a question. The original Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Original Star Trek. You lost me. <laughs> a lot of. I mean, I didn't watch every one of them. This is one of the. Chico's Vibe rejected segments. <laughs> a lot Risk. Of, that's why we're <laughs> aboard her. A lot of corny uh, plots and themes in it. I thought the corniest of them all was when they flash back to the gangster in the United States are dressed like Al Capone and those yeah. guys. You remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> but do you want to know what actually happened? They weren't on Earth. <laughs> wait, wait. They are. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm only kidding. Can I just say real quick? There's this thing called the Prime Directive. The Prime Directive is so that we don't, we don't, we don't. This uh, is where uh, uh, this is where we yeah, need to be. If you'd like on, to go get a we, cup of coffee, we, this would be the time to do it. We need to be on video because his face is lighting up. So the Prime Directive is so that we don't we don't have impact on another society's development. But what happened is a ship, an Earth ship crashed on this that world. was ed he just self combusted and from the wreckage of the ship they found a book about gangs of chicago and they took it as a a, a bible so they created oh, okay. their whole entire society and starfleet was sending the federation was sending them to clean up the mess <laughs> so kirk had to you know hey listen every time you know he started talking like hey listen it's curtains you know. for you spot curtains <laughs> So you had to like. All right, I'm done. You had, <laughs> you had Captain Kirk talking like James Cagney, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Scotty, and Scotty couldn't get it. Like Scotty was going, "If you don't do what he says, you're going to have cement overshoes." <laughs> and he's like, "You mean cement galosh?" I don't gonna, know what you're I'm going to put another quarter in the Uh-oh. in the machine that is Ed. I just Uh-oh. well, but there's the really really good one where. Captain, I can't remember what the episode's called, where Captain Kirk has to let the girl that he loves City die. Sitting on the edge of forever. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's Joan Collins. Joan Collins. Oh, Lord. Hey, uh, Matt. <laughs> the girl that played the green woman that oh, did that dance. Oh, you ever dance. seen that documentary? It's no, I did It's called The Green Girl. It's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Sorry. I did see. But yeah. who, who played that role? I'm going to go with that Ed, on this. Ed, Ed knows. I mean, she was a sort of semi-famous... Because I said that. Have you ever seen the documentary of Green Girl? And I went, Susan yeah. Oliver. Yeah. Like, immediately. She was so... She was so hot. She was hot. beautiful. And she was beautiful and, and so hot. Really and that smart. dance is the standard for me of all dances. How come you never used that as part of your stick? 
I don't know, man. You know, maybe because Star Wars. She played an Orion. <laughs> Star Trek. Star Trek. An Orion <laughs> slave girl. That would be Star Trek. Right. Then. Ah. And the Orions had pheromones. <laughs> the Orions have pheromones, so they're irresistible. <laughs> oh. So that's why, like, when Kirk would see her, he'd be like, "I must bang it." <laughs> Spock would be like, Captain, I don't know the actress's Captain. name though, because she was in other stuff. It wasn't like Sue Lyon. No, I just or... said it was Susan Oliver. Susan Oliver. Wait, who? Susan Oliver. <laughs> Good job, Ed. And, she was and in she Star was, Wars. She was a major like guest yeah. star yeah, yeah, person yeah. like across the board. And you and, can uh, show Ed any picture of a woman who was in the original Star Trek, and he will tell you wow. exactly who was. I sent you this one picture. I'm like. Who? Who's this? And you're like, bam. Uh -huh. I forget the, who the picture was, but yeah. I Maybe love that show. I love that show. And the reason I never got married was I never found a woman like her. She was that's a standard for me. <laughs> <laughs> there was nobody green enough. <laughs> I love the episode where the aliens look like pancakes and one attaches itself to Spock's back. Do you remember that one? No. It, look, it, looks like a, it looks like a burnt pancake and, and it attaches itself to Spock's back and he's like, bam. How was how was the finale of the last Wait, uh, of the original there, Star was Trek? Was there a finale? Was Where there, they get canceled uh, before they got, their time? They got canceled. The last episode is called Turnabout Intruder, but they they only had seventy nine episodes, but it was canceled. Yeah, and then what happened was, it in reruns, they were like, "What we're getting these numbers from cities for this this hour show that's coming on." Sort of like, like the Chico's yeah. Vibecast. That's it. <laughs> how about that? Yeah. So that might. Uh, that might do it for. <laughs> that was a fun segment. It was. Oh, oh! Can I tell okay. you more well, about? Have... Uh, so the <laughs> prime director, <laughs> Gebby, after they signed the treaty, uh. they, they, they banned. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness! I won't throw a break. Breaking Bad might be my favorite final episode. But as Breaking horrible Bad. as that last season oh, that's was, a great I mean, series. horrible. It was very well done. Yeah, horribleness the last season. Oh. <laughs> It's tough to do last episodes, I yeah. guess, man, after you have like a long run. Yeah. yeah. What do you end it with, you know? Well, yeah, and really can good. you wrap up every thread? Yeah. You know, I, like I thought the thread. Back to the Future, those three movies, yeah. I thought it ended the way it should end. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The DeLorean got destroyed and, you Wait, know. what? What? <laughs> but he <laughs> came back. Watch that, you know. But I, I thought that was the That's way it true. ended. Yeah. The one I've never seen because I heard it said is Toy Story 3. I hear that was a good, uh, good ride. It was oh. a tearjerker for some yeah, kids. Okay. Which one? Toy Story and some Toy Story 3. <laughs> and some adults. <laughs> one that might be sitting in this room. <laughs> <laughs> all my all my friends went to see it. We were in college. <laughs> and there's a there's a moment where the toy it literally feels like, oh, they're gonna kill all the toys. That's how they're gonna end this. They're like they're all in a conveyor belt heading, heading towards, into a furnace. towards oh, an geez. incinerator. Yeah. And they're all holding each other and talking about their memories. <laughs> and it's me and my friends and we all look at each other and we're all like <laughs> <laughs> Matt, in nineteen eighty six I went to see Transformers the movie. Oh my god. All the toys I own die in the first fifteen minutes of the film. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm sitting there going, what? And years later, that show, The Goldbergs, yeah. there's this episode oh. where the, the grandfather takes the kid to go see the Transformers movie, and they're watching it, and he goes, do the good guys always die like this? <laughs> God, the Goldbergs had some yeah. great episodes. He says, I just took your son to the talking car movie, and all his characters are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love when he takes him to Howard the Duck. Goes, oh wow! Because I think that duck is going to have sex with that woman. Wait, who, <laughs> who, in, who has attempted to watch Howard the Duck? Oh, attempted yeah, and completed. Yeah. Who? Wait, oh wait, so many times. One completed about the original movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have I've, you seen the whole I thing? Saw, not the whole thing. No, I couldn't. I, I never made it through the whole thing. Oh, there's it's a so weird. great. I used to read the cartoon monster at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we've gone far afield. <laughs> there, one other movie I can think yeah. of. Ed can attest to this. I thought The Passion of the Christ. Yeah. The ending was great. Oh, remember we saw, <laughs> we saw that. We saw that. And here's the cat of nine tails, and Gabby's uh, eating popcorn. Like the lady, the, the lady in the row in front of us is like, she's there, like, there were the people. Going like, and he's like, <laughs> there, were, there were people crying and leaving the theater. Me and him are like, <laughs> <laughs> Drinking soda, we're eating popcorn. Oh, this is great. Oh, oh, did you see that? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, man. I was... And the other ladies like, What's the ending? Uh, you see Satan screaming in hell. Yeah, right? that was that was a good part. 
<laughs> that was like that long gig, and we put on the North and the South, and and I think Doc said, ah, "I know how to sense." <laughs> it was Ke- Kevin Burns a North and South documentary? <laughs> Ken, oh. Ken Burns, Ken Burns. Civil, Civil War. Civil War. Civil War. There was a there was because there was a, a North and the mini South. series called North and yeah. And I, and I hear the like you put the DVD in, and I'm just hearing like the harmonica. I know how this one ends. <laughs> That was on the bus, yeah. <laughs> you know, that had a great, like, uh, guitar theme. A, a show can farewell. What's mm-hmm. it called? A show can farewell. A really good. And no, no, Resky no, no, used to be no, able to no, play no. that perfectly, man. It was really, really good. And the whole fact that the guy who went on before Lincoln spoke for like three hours or something like that before he did the, the Gettysburg Oh, Gettysburg the Gettysburg Address. address. Yeah. Yes. That guy spoke for. I could probably do the whole Gettysburg Address right now. If you want. And the Gettysburg Address. You was... did that with me stand in the room. <laughs> We were at the Union League, and I was at the room where it's, it's on the it's wall. It's on the wall. It's there. on the wall, but he turns facing me and says it, and I'm following it on the wall. <laughs> on the wall. And you, stump, you stumbled at one section and then recovered, and you finished the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I always stumbled. I, yeah. I know the section I stumbled. Of course, you were the president of the Philadelphia Gettysburg I was, Society. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Little known fact to our Chico's Vibe listeners. Now the world can know. That's right. <laughs> And Abraham Lincoln is on an episode of Star Trek. It's called The Savage Curtain. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> is this true? It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh. I keep trying to get Ed to watch Columbo because it's a favorite show of my butt. Oh, come on. I'm about to start it. Excuse it's on Peacock. Me. I just saw it was on Peacock. Excuse I was going to watch it. Nimoy and Shatner, both, <laughs> both are killers. Oh, man. really? Yeah. They're watching- both really good. I got an ad on Peacock, and it was like, hey, here's all the great mystery shows we have. And it was Murder, First, She Wrote, and Columbo. I was like, I'll watch both of those. Why my not? sister watches Columbo every single <laughs> oh, day. God. It's because it's great. Comes home from work. I, I mean, she's seen every episode a hundred times. I love probably. how one show is called McMillan and Wife. Oh, like, she God. doesn't get a name. <laughs> McMillan and Wife. <laughs> well, that was, yeah, that was a separate show. It was yeah. part of the Murder, Mercy. But yeah, Spielberg directed the first the first regular season episode of wow. Columbo. Spielberg directed oh. it. It's really... Really, he was like 23 or something. You know, as a little tidbit of information, when um, Back to the Future won, the first one, yes, right? uh, Marty McFly, when he first like zaps back to 1955. Yeah. November 13th. He, turned back. <laughs> he zapped back exactly. to that date. I was six months old. Wow. <laughs> About that. Uh. <laughs> Save the clock tower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Save the clock tower. Save the clock tower. Uh, all right. Does it, I think that may wrap us up for TV. Yeah. If Ed's done. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I could go it forever. Come on! Good. <laughs> good segment. Good segment. We didn't mention the Godfathers at all. We did not. You know, and you that know, just hit yeah, me. Yeah, but that ends with well, part three. If right. I, yeah, which, <laughs> right, that's, which which is could terrible. be considered... <laughs> A series, if you put, you yeah. know, think of all three of them. And the final end is Michael Corleone sitting in his chair in the backyard and he just dies. That's alone. Uh, I, well, alone. I'm glad you said, and I, it ends. I, well, wasn't that always thing by protecting the family, you could lose it? Yes, wasn't that what he always yes. feared? But you can't lose your family, Michael. His mom tells him that. He says mm. all things, things what did, have what changed. What did you think of the third? Of uh, the three. No, I didn't mind number three. Everybody slammed a shit out of it because it was an Academy Award winner, like one and two. Right. You know, I mean, those friggin' movies are great, but I thought three was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it. His daughter got killed and she was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> There's an entirely different cut of the third that just came out. I, a right, years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, like one or two years ago, I think. Because they put on like all the outtakes or something. Uh, no, they well, I, I think there were there were a lot of fights between him and the studio. So I think this might the one that he just released may be closer to what his. Oh, good. So you might want to revisit I'll be watching it. that. Yeah, but I mean the first two were so great, but they had similar endings. Yeah. You know, number one, Michael wipes out every other family. Yeah. And in the second one, similar to that, you know, yeah. everybody else gets wiped out again. And Michael was, he was cutthroat. Like, he wasn't, uh, he didn't have that gentlemanly um, air about, about him like Don Corleone, Vito Corleone, right, right. who would kill everybody anyway. But, but Pacino was so, so great in that role. 
I think. Just so understated. Say it again. Pacino was so yeah. great in that role. Very understated performance. Unlike a lot of what he became, you know. Like, yes, exactly. Which happens in to other a lot movies. of actors. Yeah. That they yeah. become caricatures of themselves yeah. almost. Like in Anthony Hopkins or even like a Nicholson. Yeah. Like yeah. After a while, they almost they play themselves. Yeah. You know, point. but... But like you're saying, that's prior to that. That's when he had like, he was like reserved. It yeah. even underneath. happens with I've like seen, comedy. Um, like so I think Leslie Nielsen was at his funniest early on when he was still playing it like he was a dramatic actor. Yeah. And then oh, once yeah, they were straight. like, yeah. then he started kind of mugging like he was in on the joke and it yeah. ruined everything. Right. <laughs> it was like, mm-hmm. The actors in, in The Godfather just blew me away. Marlon Brando was perfect for me. He reminded me of my grandfather in his old years, but... Uh. Then you had De Niro in yeah. number two. That's mm-hmm. young Don Corley. I, I don't like this movie. They just blew me away. Yeah, and then fantastic. three came along, which wasn't as good. Who did you have? A Joey Zaza. You know, these newer actors. But it wasn't bad. Right. How about curious. Don Fanucci in number two? I can't remember Don Guy Fanucci. in the white yeah, he suit. Was, ah. he, was like this. he was the black hand. And... The black hand, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Before okay. they actually... Lucky Luciano came. He yeah, pitches like De Niro's 19. cheek, and then De Niro just goes. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, probably yeah, like yeah, nineteen twenty. Yeah. Okay, maybe even earlier than that. Uh-huh. When uh, he yeah. grew Fanucci. up, and it was in New York, and, and know, he was stealing from all all the New York, you know, all the Italian people. In New yeah, York. yeah, he was young, like, strong arm, arming them. Yeah, uh, Nicky Corino to bring him into it. Yeah, you know that's I mean? a rejected episode. What's that? <laughs> A Corvino episode. The Corvino Chronicles. Well, I'm, oh. <laughs> well, I'll bring him into this one. With that Don Fanucci, there's a scene when De Niro's up on the roofs, like tracking him. You know, he's going to kill him. He's going from roof to roof to roof. And you're looking down on this procession. I think it's the Santa Lucia procession or something or whatever right, church is there. Yeah. yeah, all the people. Yeah. They got the the Blessed Mother. They got the gigantic statue. Right, they all throw money, money on, on it. it. Yeah. Funucci goes up and puts money on it. Uh, but the band. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the band at that are playing a song. <laughs> whatever. Nicky Corvino knew the song because <laughs> he was in the same kind of a band in Wilmington somewhere. In some and he used to do the old ladies too. <laughs> Just to get to, get to the, the Vibecast bootlegs. So these are rejected, <laughs> rejected episodes, episodes, rejected segments, things we couldn't release. So the Corvino Chronicles is, is one of them. That would have been a fun... <laughs> Could have done multiple episodes with yeah. Nikki Corvino, but sadly, we planned it and Nikki subbed it out last minute. So, oh, oh. <laughs> Tony showed up and it just wasn't the same. Which became Tony from the toilet. That's right. Oh, Jesus. In that segment. Who also was held up. Oh. Oh. Rejected episode number two is Chico's Vibe Naked. That was supposed to be the acoustic music episode. <laughs> Wasn't it Naked and Afraid? <laughs> naked, naked and, and Afraid. afraid. Chico's Vibe oh, Naked and Afraid. That was the God. acoustic music episode, but uh, it was misunderstood. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank God that would have totally been audio. A rejected segment we were, we were planning. You know, we were doing Chico's Vibe in the Netflix series, and a rejected Netflix, Netflix episode was the one entitled, I Have Become Uncomfortably Numb, Mudfest and Hellfire at Harbaugh Village. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> it had everything. Oh we were God. freezing to death. <laughs> smoke in our yeah. faces. There was mud fire. everywhere you went. The fire, fire, isn't, the fire yeah. isn't smoky enough. Please put another pizza box on it. <laughs> it was like even when I drove home and got out of my car, I was still in mud. What? I couldn't figure out why. <laughs> I remember I sent Gabby a text like when I left the house. You know, I'm getting ready to jump on the blue road. I'm going, Gab, it's 11 degrees. <laughs> he said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was for no laundry. Yeah. The 11 degree one. That was like the next week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> and we played, but at oh, least the God. heaters worked at that. This is the second time. Yes. Yeah. I remember I turned around and Brian Farr was down to his t shirt because the <laughs> oh, torpedo right. heater was right behind him and it was blowing n- nothing but hot air on <laughs> I was out front freezing my. Yeah, it was Balls toasty off. back well, in the day. Uh, uh, guy. Guy came out to the gig and oh, posted yeah. it. 
It posted on Facebook, Chico's vibe, I think, and it's just a cloud of smoke. <laughs> and you see, like, top of Gabby's head and, like, a little bit. Yeah, and he's just like, Chico's vibe, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it did kind of look like a war zone with the fire and all the mud. It was like the troops had just like. And we, we wanted to go on to the ice skating rink to get you a picture. You tried to go on the ice skating rink. And the girl wouldn't let us go on. Oh, you're like, oh my even, God, I didn't even, want to go on the ice skating rink. <laughs> even though no one was skating. Not a soul in the friggin' ice skating rink. Oh, you can't go on without skates. Uh, no. yeah, okay, let's get 15 pairs of so skates. That could have been a good episode. Could have yeah. been. Yeah. Could have been. Uh, okay, so uh, you've seen the TV show The Voice. Mm-hmm. No. So this was no. This never one's watched. called the. You never smell. watched The Voice. It's a TV nah. show where up and coming aspiring singers compete. Yeah, I know what it is. Compete against I... each other. So th- there was going to be Chico's vibe, The Voice, Johnny Addis versus Dom Durbano. We we're going to have them <laughs> in house, <laughs> but that got shut down. That got shut down. And the yeah, Addis there... episode was good. <laughs> was with... that that we did here with the Addis? Yeah, it was very good. Was good. Would there have been a four chair turn? I on what. <laughs> We're not sure. There, would there have been a steal? We don't know. Steel. We'll never know. <laughs> Wait, what is what was yes. uh, what is turns for you? <laughs> what is Shadis's ethnic background again? Because like maybe there's He's that Polish. area of Europe that we we got weird figures. Oh, from. that's true. He's oh. Polish. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. It's like there's this little town that just has a well. In like one church, and they're like, oh, the, 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 the. they have a picture of Yadis. The, 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 the guy's like, what? He can't hear it. He's got the two pails because he just finished milking the cows. He's like, <laughs> they have his picture, and they go, the great Yadis. <laughs> There's this big sweaty guy goes up to the tower. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> Yadosh, episode Yadosh. Oh, oh, God. This is where I like to remind our listeners that Ed has not had anything to drink. <laughs> All right, Dateline. You know the show Dateline? Yep. Dateline, the disappearance of Matt Cantwell. Uh, <laughs> and we had complete disappearance. Yes. Mm-hmm. We were planning on doing a DNA swab of Yadish's trunk, but we had we never got there. So it's a cold case. He was going never to be case. seen again no. by anybody that I know. All the guys that ever like I asked Chris McCord because he was the first one. He like, just disappeared. disappeared. Mm-hmm. He said, well, "I ain't seen Matt in years." <laughs> like, and for those listeners who don't know, Matt was Chico's Vibe's original bass player. Yes, yeah. not exactly, but our Sorry. first our first. You know, long term original bass yeah. player because we had who we have, Gab. What was the kid's name? Adam Blackstone. And then for one gig, we had uh, one rehearsal. Oh, we uh, oh. Say Jolly or whatever. Uh, Bill Job, not Bill, um, his brother. <laughs> we Jolly. offered him the job Brett. and he ran away. Brett, <laughs> Brett Jolly, I believe. <laughs> and then Coot. Uh, oh, yeah, we had Coot. Coot for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Coot Willie Coot Lemons. refused yeah. to play the. Uh, the Sinatra shit. Vaughn, turn him up. I can't hear him. He's not playing. <laughs> <laughs> that was so embarrassing for everyone. But man, he could dig in on the. Oh, uh, he was incredible. Right yeah, and I and, liked him too, man. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one we were going to discuss, but we shot Ed and Parky's favorite pre-gig drum sound checks. That was what. Oh my god, <laughs> there fun. was one that <laughs> this this happened. I had to be Dominic. How can you that's what gets me. I'm like, I'm like Parky. I was throwing him. I guess it's my favorite part of the night. Yeah, here. I hit the bass drum and it's just. All right, the snare. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, Give me the rack, Tom. Uh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Floor, Tom. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's exactly how it is. <laughs> Dave Miller, the guy that used to own the Rusty Nail years ago, you know, we, we would play there all the time, the Big Daddy Band. And same deal with the drum check. Finally, one day, Dave couldn't take it anymore. He goes, Dominic, 
the drums work. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, next one. Rejected, consider, but rejected. The art of feedback with Dennis Giacchino. Because oh. <laughs> people don't know this. You, I've never seen anybody get feedback from their hearing aids. <laughs> All right, you know, that's it. Whip me, shame me. Uh, no, well, the next one. No, Wait, the I'm, feedback, it was like if I turn my ear towards the microphone, somehow, like. Um, <laughs> Whatever is it like that, that scene in Spinal Tap where they're picking up the radio signals yeah. through the guitar? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one I considered, but I couldn't come up with any content. Parky's greatest trombone solos. <laughs> I would, so many. There's so many to name. Uh, well, you got a great one in the uh, Chuck Berry song. I play the same thing every time because I can't solo. But so, you, you, <laughs> wait, I don't I know just, if you knew this. I'm waiting I, for Tony to I yell just, at me. It's the same thing. I just have to say my favorite John Parkinson trombone warm up is the old one he used to do. <laughs> That's Lass's trombone, yeah. Uh, you used to do the uh, the solo of Under My Skin in, in, in the John Hoey Orchestra. Yeah, yeah, that was all right. And you yeah. fit a ticket remember, to ride in... in uh, uh, you bu buy a ticket to ride, and that's your I solo. I threw up a ticket to ride in there for once. You were the only one <laughs> who got it. I was like, you <laughs> throw the Bonner fight song in, in the background <laughs> from time to time, you know. Uh, yeah, but anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's sentimental over you. Back with Hoey. Used to do that. And that's, on, yeah. that's online. You yes. Can, uh, yeah, but one that would be fun, but we can't do because I'd be curious to get all you guys would be the top ten brides from hell. Oh. You know, <laughs> we can never do that. But right. we, can't, <laughs> we can't name names. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, was one recently, we all know. But, uh, I mean, oh. number one was you didn't play anything that I asked for. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, wait, Ed's arguing. I said, I'll bring this set list over. <laughs> And then that other guy joins in. You need to apologize to him. <laughs> apologize. <laughs> apologize to Chico. He didn't know my name. He goes, apologize to Chico and this guy. <laughs> the guy in the background was yeah. from Ardmore. She's saying this and that and the other thing. And this is like drunken guys back there. That you need to apologize. Him. Chico's the best. Motown. <laughs> 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 so we played every Motown song you wanted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here comes a set list. All right. Another segment rejected. Would have been a good one. Ed Mount's sweatiest gigs. Oh. So, <laughs> though I think I know the sweatiest. What would that be? The Bonner Prendy uh, all class reunion outside at the uh, warehouse. When we were on the sand. Yeah, on the sand, yes. Because uh, you guys were in the sun. Yes. In the front. Oh, the one that was on sand. Yeah. Yeah. The first oh, year we did yes. it. Yes. Oh, jeez. No, Ed, you're like pondering. No, Maybe I'm thinking more. there was that one because there was. There was this other gig we played where there was this tent that was shooting water out of the ceiling of the tent. Oh, it was yeah, like a I kind of remember that. And Jero uh, uh, Jacobowski goes, that's Ed Mount if he were a tent. Because <laughs> it was just shooting water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I remember that gig being pretty hot, too. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the one out, uh, the other Browner Penny Prendy gig we did on the blacktop in front of the friggin' cheesesteak right. joint. That was hot, too. Oh, it was like, ridiculously yeah. high or the fairgrounds right before There's... the storm remember oh my yeah, god that was hot. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that's, that that's where brian far yeah. this yeah. is bullshit yeah. the, the, my favorite part of that we talked about before was i was watching tony's shirt and uh, you could see the sweat <laughs> <laughs> just it was spread. just getting darker <laughs> yes. and darker and, and then darker. it connected in the middle <laughs> <Yeah>. and it's <laughs> <sweat. laughs> i do remember that oh, and man. it was like a matter of minutes it wasn't yeah. <laughs> Oh, and he wasn't sad. doing anything. And it formed wow. the image of Groucho Marx on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> I remember Dennis Saglinski, uh, when we used to play at Keenan's and it would get like really hot on that stage, he was always like, I'm going to figure out a way to get you guys air conditioning on that stage. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I'm going to get one of those things. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> mm. All right, I'll skip over some of these. One I thought would be interesting. You know, we used to do that love it, love it, keep it, trash it with right. the songs. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So I came up with an idea. Uh, Chico's vibe, fans on stage, love them, keep them, tase them. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can bleep <laughs> out the <laughs> names. <laughs> you can bleep out the names later. Yeah. So they don't oh get my out. God. There'd people be a lot of on stage, people, we, You know, so Lauren's our number one. Right. right. On, on stage that we love. Right. There's some keep and then there's some people that. Tase. Yes. <laughs> some Taze people that think it's okay to go through the band to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. You know? there, I have a whole lot more, but I think, we, I think we've exhausted the, <laughs> the, the fun <laughs> on that segment. That was the, uh, <laughs> but you were, Dennis, there are other things you wanted to talk about that we never talked about. That text you sent earlier today. I don't know if I should remind you. You wanted to revisit the College Fight Song episode, the Allman Brothers episode, and the Jason Long episode. <laughs> Favorites. <laughs> the Jason Long. No, well, been, allowed to say, I'm, I'm reading this. Could have been my favorite. No mention of Rick Anthony is allowed. No, no. And you already mentioned him once. Twice. Twice. We <laughs> never did a Greatest Falls episode. So that's a little bit. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. And we have some of the best falls we've ever seen. Well, Monica's got the number one fall, right? Well, I think John McKeever, but that was oh, just me and Gabby. Yeah, that was in, yeah. Uh, the Monica's fall was great too. Was wonderful. Yeah, because there, she came out out of her shoes. Yeah, out of her shoes so, and <laughs> and fully in fully flight. extended, <laughs> fully in flight. I used to look because then Matt afterwards, whenever he'd see her, would go shields up. <laughs> Shields up. <laughs> but there was the fall. Oh, that drunken girl at Anthony's. Oh, on stage. Oh, no, that's a different one. I was thinking of the, the girl who fell on stage at... Um, McSorley's? Uh, Woody's, was it? No, no. no um, what was it called? It was Woody's. a woman's yeah. name. The the place was a, yeah. a woman's name. On Lancaster Avenue. Brown Frazier. Maddie's. Maddie's, 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 yeah. yeah. So she Maddie's. face planted on. It. She goes, "I want to give you a heart attack." Yes, I said, oh, go that that right girl. over the monitor. I said, yeah. "Go yeah. give the bass player a heart she attack." She fell like onto the one metal, one metal piece of the stage. Like her head went right onto that. She might have. She might have fallen onto the riser of the drums, <laughs> but it was right over the monitor. I remember that. But there was a good wipeout at McSorley's that like knocked over Matt stuff and all like the horn section stuff. I forget who the hell fell. But it was a complete wipeout. There was, a gay, there was St. David's Golf Club where a guy fell over Ed's monitor and crushed and his crushed sack. Crushed his sack. He oh, broke it. He broke yeah. it. Didn't you got, and I went over to him. Yeah. And I yelled at him like a child. I went, look what you did. I like had <laughs> well, it with me. Your sacks was yeah. flat. I said, give me your, <laughs> give me your number. You're not, you're, and, uh, Herbie Smith ended up fixing it. And then I saw him at another gig, and he got close again. And I was like, you yeah, fell on my did. shit last time. Get away from here. Mm -hmm. oh. So yeah, that uh, would have been a good one. Great, yeah. great yeah. falls. There's, there's been so many. Me and Gabby saw another great fall of gigantic Pat Clark at the Oakmont oh, Pub. Yeah. Oh, I, is that the round mound oh, of sound? Yeah. He round mound a, of sound. I was a, there. Yes. Yeah, he, he, did did he took away. people out. He took like people out. He took Yaddish out. Pirouette. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he spun. Took people, and then it was like a tornado. Mm -hmm. You could just out. see it. It was like... <laughs> they called it. <laughs> they, they identified the section as the event horizon. <laughs> yeah. I think happened. it hit F5. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Is it an yeah. F5? He's up front. Yeah, it was like an F5 five. on the scale. Five. Oh, that was good. Yeah. All right. He apologized move. profusely afterwards. Oh, no, yeah. To all guy. the people I, he, know, he killed. I would never holler. At him. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of stories about. You could do a whole podcast on him. You know, McKeever or McKeever. <laughs> yeah, we tried to get him as a guest. And yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. We tried to dial <laughs> in. <laughs> oh, yeah. The number you have reached. Eddie, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I was at the end of the drama. Which would have been good, but. Yeah, anyway. no, for the future of music, I'm I'm planning on somehow, somehow, ending the whole like Taylor Swift and all that bullshit. I I, I haven't figured it out yet, but uh, <laughs> well, you, people been requesting Taylor Smith from us no. for years and years. Uh, are you gonna try to harm the U.S. economy? I mean, she's yeah. single, she's if I have to harm the U.S. economy. By destroying that type of music, uh -huh. I'll gladly do it. <laughs> you don't even know what she sounds like. I do too, because Monica has it all, uh -oh, all the time true. now in the house. I get so mad. I'm going, wait a minute. What we... 
you really like these songs? Like, you know, Taylor Swift seems like a cool person and all. But I'm watching the music and I'm going, this is like boring. It's not, in what's interesting in that music that you guys go berserk over? So I hear it all the time. All the effing time. Okay. Now she's like, she likes Travis Kelsey because, you know, he dates her. Right. It's like, oh, it's my, it's my man, Travis Kelsey. I said, why is he your man? <laughs> because he goes out with Swift? No, I, well, I, I really think it's a good player. I said, well, he's having a horrible season, okay? And all the NFL people are blaming it on Taylor Swift. <laughs> hey, did you see the, the documentary called Kelsey? No, I haven't watched I haven't that. It's, it's really I've seen good. A couple it's pretty of the good. Podcast yeah. things, him and his brother. Yeah, they have a competing podcasts. They're they're being the thing. It's on the, Netflix, right? Uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, Amazon Prime. Yeah. Okay. So let's start to talk about Bruce Springsteen. First off, yeah. When we talked, we had a Billy Joel episode. We found out that you met Billy Joel. Yeah, a couple times. You never, you never met Bruce. two nights in a row. Yes, you never met Bruce though. Did you ever see no, Bruce? No, I never at, met Bruce. Okay. Though. Okay. I was trying to figure out where the deep seated resent. You know, you don't like Bruce, right? I mean, <laughs> Bruce ever meet you? They're, they're kind of true. There are, kind of, there are two. I'll start with a couple of facts about us and Bruce. With one, with limited exception, Springsteen songs don't work unless it's a Bruce crowd. I think that's a general correct. Mm -hmm. And second is Dennis does not care for Springsteen songs. Correct. correct. My attitude has changed a little over a little. the years. I mean, in the larger world, there's this passionate fan base for Bruce, and uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. critics absolutely love him. Well, they used to hate him. What's that? They used to hate him. Critics did? Or critics did? used to destroy Springsteen. What? Really? When? Because now you never hear anybody, the critics say bad things about 70s, early 80s, I guess. Huh. Oh, no, 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 they used to tear him You didn't him think up. it changed? Because he, he got put on the cover of Time and Newsweek. Both at the same time in seventy five. Look, he he deserves it. He's been around for a hundred years and he, you know, keeps putting out music and he gives great shows. I actually saw him ah. in, you know, maybe the late seventies. Not even liking him. I went with a couple cousins and I thought he'd put on a great show. Okay. Now my attitude has changed. First of all, I think the most entertaining song that we do is you two guys with Rosalita. You know, the way you work off of each other and you do all your crazy stuff. Thank very, you. Very, very entertaining. Thank you very much. Um, and learning all these other songs that I just completely fucking hate. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got, I got a list of them. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. Like, I always tell people, uh, you know, if I went out to see a band, I would never go to see Chico's Vibe because... <laughs> I don't like the songs. Oh, that was one of the s segments I forgot. Okay, well. Kill, I mean, Kill Me Now, the songs we hate the most. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now I'm listening to all this other stuff, you know, I'm like Timberlake and um, who, who else did we do that I don't like? <laughs> a lot, a lot Everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, and then I would listen to, to you guys doing uh, Rosalita or uh, 10th Avenue or whatever else we were doing that was Springsteen song I'm saying it's so much better uh, uh, it's well written you know it's got all these different parts in it that other songs don't have it just like is like miles above this other stuff I, I keep thinking music is like just degrading. It the the hit stuff I'm talking about, yeah. pop music. You know, there's other great, great music in 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 other genres. But and I started saying, I, I got to give it up to Springsteen, man. You know, he was doing something that was substantial, and uh, it's way better than this stuff. So, yeah. yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, but I also wonder if it's just lyrically like, uh, and um, music. If it's like in terms of music now, but I, I also wonder if it's just me being an old. Well, Frankie it's me guy, definitely yeah. being well, old. All I have to say is, uh, out of a lot of musicians that I know, the people that really, really like him are not musicians. Right. No, you're that's, absolutely that's, right. In general, Whereas musicians in other don't people seem like, to... Like, you, uh, people that are into certain groups are like, they play an instrument. Absolutely they, right. Know. Right. Performing musicians don't seem to love Bruce, nope. yeah. it seems like. Yeah. And I've noticed that over the years. Like, you got Grizz, all these other guys I know. I'm not doing Springsteen. But... You know, I've come to like say, okay, and the guy's got something. And we do more. 
we do more Springsteen. We've done more Springsteen songs than I realized. And this is just what I was able to count. You guys may think of more. There are... Well, because we had that one Springsteen wedding. Yeah, yeah. Remember the guy had the slideshow? So there, mm-hmm. there may be more that I don't have. So oh, there's, there's out in the street and like all these other. There's so yes. many that we learned. Go ahead, John. No, there's three that usually work. 10th, 10th Avenue, Glory Days, and Rosalita. Yes, mm-hmm. right, exactly. Then there's the mixed bag of stuff. So out in the street, Badlands, we tried to Bad do one Thunder, Thunder Road. Mm-hmm. Thunder Road. Yeah. Thunder I Road like is, playing Thunder Road, Me actually. too. Yeah, I feel like we could do it better. I think Board yeah. to Run could work if we if we worked on it a little more, too. Like, and, and did we ever do that? You know what song we never did, works? But it's, yeah. it's, Santa, it's Santa Claus is coming, coming to town. town. It's, first time we did it, I'm like, here I go. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it, it, uh-oh. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> You're like two, a third of the way in. It's yeah. like, this is not working it's at the- all. <laughs> 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 yeah. They yep. play it every damn Christmas. Why does it work? I mean, <laughs> Another yeah. song too, Gab. It's- uh, so there's "When You Need Me." Yeah, I remember yeah. that. One. If I should fall behind. There yep. you go. That's what I was thinking. Waiting about. on a sunny day. We did. Yep. It once. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. always liked. I like that too. I'm on fire though. Like a, a, out of the Bruce song. That's a good. Well, that's good. Yeah, so like, that's a uh, written. Uh, baby, is it good for you? Oh, do, 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 oh that's do, uh, uh, that I do. Oh, oh. That was in the Born in the USA Elmer, album. That's Elmer Fudd. Yeah. I got a bad I got desire. Bad desire. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm on fire. Oh no, that's no the Elmer Fudd one. Bruce wrote it. I'm driving in my car. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, radio. radio. <laughs> I pull you closer. <laughs> that Bruce, was Bruce closer. wrote that, but it was the Pointer yeah. Sisters. Pointer Sisters yeah. made it. Yeah. Yeah. But oh. Bruce's version is better. Well, it's like the other one too. Um, uh, oh God. I think it was Man for Man did it. Oh, uh, blinded by blinded the by light. the light. <laughs> yeah. And that Man for Man's version, I liked so much better, better than, than Bruce, the original. Yeah. Wait, who did the first one? Springsteen wrote Springsteen. it. Springsteen. Springsteen. He wrote, wrote it. it. Yeah, and recorded oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it. I was on his first album. Man's version yeah. better. Yeah. Than yeah. He was like blinded by yeah, the yeah, light, yeah, yeah. like that yeah. tempo. Yeah. Some of those early like, albums are pretty good, though. I mean, you just like a lot of acoustic stuff on. Uh, Did you completely change yeah. your Springsteen? Yeah, he became bombastic. <laughs> no, but I mean, you've changed. I have changed big time on yeah. Bruce. What's the? I'm not saying I'm ready to go out and buy Bruce albums and listen to him. I'm just okay comparing him What's to what the I hear now. Springsteen tune and... that lines like. Dun, 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 oh, dun, 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 spirits dun, dun, dun. in the yeah, night. Yeah, spirits in the night. night. Yeah. And he's always got nicknames in this song. Oh, well, especially Sally those Wayne early ones. And the oh, pistol yeah. Down, pistol Pete down with his brown yeah, 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 yeah. his shoes in the car. And we all going to get big, the car. We're going to drive bones, away. And... Billy? That's Rosalie. Yeah, I, yeah. I always thought it was Big Balls. Big Balls, balls but it's but Big, big Bones. Big bones. Billy? What is Big Paul? Big I thought it was the guy that played with you guys. Uh, no, it's Big Paul. Big Billy. Yeah, Big Bones Billy. Yeah. Um, he He's always, like he was always talking about the girl and her daddy. I know your daddy he doesn't like me, you know, yeah. that song. But way back it was, hey, little girl, is your daddy home? And she just always had, like, that That's theme cool. going on. Yeah. And the guys on the street, of course, like I was saying. Yes. You know. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, he was, he, particularly back then, he was a storyteller. But yeah. But Rosalita was released in November sorry, November 5th, 1973. Right. Bruce's second album called The Wild, The Innocent, and The East Street Shuffle. Um, the album sold poorly, though it got decent reviews. Um, in addition to Ros- Rosalita, there was a couple other songs in the album that sort of became like FM radio uh, hits. There's one called Fourth of July, Asbury Park, or Sandy. I don't, you may oh, have heard yeah, that. that's Sandy. a good song. Sandy. Uh-huh. I actually like that. Yeah. And then uh, uh, Kitty's Back is a great horn song. Get his back in town. Here she comes now. No, I can tell. I recognize the the name. It's a really good yeah. song. Really good structured. What's the one? Um, <laughs> this is, is deja on vu. That <laughs> album? For some reason. Spirits, in the, night. Spirits in the night. Which one? I like the Hey little girl, where's your daddy <laughs> gone? <laughs> go I, I like that one. What's that one? Called? Yeah, I think so he talks funny. about Big Bones Billy, right? There's some. I thought it was Big Paul. I thought it was <laughs> Big Paul. Big Balls. That was a Howie thing. <laughs> 
did you guys worry that? <laughs> Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. I was freaking out. <laughs> Talk about quantum leap. I think I just leaped into Parky. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> the, Rosalie, <laughs> Rosalie is over seven minutes long. It was never released as a single. It became a showcase in Bruce's live shows and um, eventually <coughs> became very popular. Um I can actually remember that Rosalita being played at the Prendy Senior Prom in 1981. How about that? Mm. Uh, Springsteen has called it a love song. Of course, it's the, it has a huge saxophone feature, multiple segments, and lots of opportunity for audience participation. Um, it has that interesting facet of early Bruce songs we talked about where a lot of the lyrics are these characters with crazy names that rhyme. Um, he st- kind of got out of that mode if starting with Born to Run. Um, you know, I like to do, so it was released in 1973. I like to run through what the top 10 were for the year. Real quick. Did he yeah. say what, like why he wrote it? Why is, why is it Rosalita? Like, well, who, is I, that someone or. So I look, I don't see that he said anything about it. There's a girlfriend that he had at the time. Her name was Diane Lozito. And she said that he got the idea. Um, from that from her last name so it was just kind of fictitious yeah i mean there's a kernel of there are kernels of you know truths in the song like he had dated somebody whose mom wouldn't let you know when he was like 17 uh he did you know get a big advance for his first album right um so there's things in there that that kind of happened to based on true things but okay um that's from what little i can Right, could a could piece together from right, trying to right, right. research it. Um, but the, the t- we already did the top ten for nineteen seventy three. I can't remember what other song was from then, but I remember because there was a song on there called "Why Me" by Chris Christopherson that only Dennis. Why me, Lord? <laughs> what have I ever done? <laughs> See, <laughs> so I thought I would look up the top ten albums. Oh, oh. Cool. top 10 selling albums, Billboard year end chart, 1973. Number one, it's it's a crazy list. I mean, it's good, but Dark Side of the Moon was number one. Oh, of 1973. course. 1973. Okay. Then two Elton John albums, Don't Shoot Me, I'm Only the Piano Player, number oh, good two. One. Goodbye, Elbert Grove, number three. Oh. Houses of the Holy by wow. Led Zeppelin, number Zeppelin. four. The World is a Ghetto by War was number five. I like mm. this song. Living in the Material World by George Harrison, six. Chicago, six, was number seven. Um, that That is just you and me on it, Chicago, six. Mm. A Passion Play by Jethro Tull. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. You kidding me? Number yeah. eight. Number is eight. That the, I think that's the one with Living in the Past on I it. I don't maybe. know it at all. Hmm. I mean, I was a big Jethro Tull fan. Brothers and Sisters, the Allman Brothers. Right. Oh, that should have been higher. And then Red Road Speedway, Paul McCartney and Wings. Yeah. You know, um, so you Elton the- did two two albums in one year. Yeah. Wow. You said something in the middle there. Go through that middle section. Number four, Houses of the Holy. Keep going. The World Is a Ghetto, War. Number five. I like that song. Next one. <laughs> Hmm. Next, <laughs> there's something that hit me. Living in living in the material world, George oh, Harrison. That that was the album after All Things Must Pass. Yes, right? it was. Yeah, yeah. And All Things Must Pass was just you know sensational. Yeah. Dun, dun, living dun, in the material dun, world. Dun, I think. Dun. Oh, we should do that. Yeah. Which one? The All Things Must Pass. That's a good I was just song. doing the the trombone tenor sax. Part. I think. <laughs> <laughs> in case Living you in the were material worried. world, not having anything to do with Madonna, of course, but correct. Um, I think that it had good sales because of all things must pass because it wasn't half the album that you know his first album was. I agree. There are some decent like songs on it. Give yeah, me love, give it, me peace know, on earth. Is on that other one was so great. I think yeah, I agree though. Residual sales and Brothers and Sisters was the first album made without Dwayne Allman. Didn't know that. Allman um, Brothers' first album they made without Dwayne Allman. So uh, we had a Sesame Street album called Born to Add, and it was like a, <laughs> it, it had a, a, a guy dressed like how he was on the cover of the album. Yeah, where he's like, like that. I'll have to find it for you. So Chico's vibe and Rosalita. I found the email 
from August 2007, <laughs> where we were first. It was an apologetic email from Gabby. <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. I didn't think we had to learn this. <laughs> we'll do it if Chico doesn't hate it, is what the email said. Right. And 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 I think the only reason I sing it is because nobody else want wanted to. to. <laughs> and look where it is today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't think it started to get. It was. It always felt awkward because the problem. One problem with Rosalita is if the crowd's not into Bruce, the song. You're like, Feels oh, this, like, so here goes the next nine minutes. Yes. You know, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. And it, it, but I don't think we started to, <laughs> I don't think we started to have fun with it until repeated drunken performances at Keenan's. Yeah. And oh, then okay. we just started to add, a little bit yeah. of liquid courage. Yeah. I started to add, cause Bruce, when he does it live and he introduces Clarence Clemens, right, he goes, yeah, the big yeah, man, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and yeah, I started yeah. to add, the, they add stuff. Yeah. And I would, when we in my, in our younger years, <laughs> we used to do a lot more. I mean, I, I can remember, I can remember like going down my on my knees on stage, at Keenan. Yeah, and right. today I'm like, no, <laughs> well, I can't do that. Yeah, right. Push ups one you time, brought... and you said, "Are you on cocaine?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, though, because I was the one that picked this song for the songs from the set list. Yeah. And it was because, like Dennis, I didn't like Bruce Springsteen. I completely wrote off Bruce Springsteen until one night at Keenan's, you guys played this, and the song was stuck in my head because it was such a good version. Yeah, it's and great. then I just dove into his entire catalog from there. Cool. Okay. So Chico's cool. vibe converted me into a Springsteen. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I mean, I get to see it from, you know, a different perspective than the crowd too. Like I'm behind you guys, and Ed's doing his thing, going back with the sax. <laughs> You guys used to do the kick with the the snare and oh, cymbal. he still does the kick. Yeah, yeah. He does it, but you don't do it with it anymore. Well, I you know if there's room, I do. But a lot of times there's just no room. On One the time, time like Ed's, the, Ed's yeah. the feature kicker. He's well, <laughs> One time you guys were doing it. We used to cr cross on the you stage. Kick, yeah, you were crossover and you were coming back towards Gabby doing the kick. And when you got close to him, Gabby acted like you kicked him, and he like. <laughs> <laughs> Off the side of his keyboard. It was, you know, just. One every... time it was during the Love Shack, I did the thing where I pour the glitter. Yeah. And I acted like I poured glitter on, on his keyboard. Yeah, yeah. And you made this face like you were pissed. And this girl in the front goes, He made him mad. I heard her say, He made the guy mad. She uh. saw. <laughs> uh. But anyway, that's that's Rosalie. People pay attention to what we do, you know. And yeah, they get a kick it's, out it's, of it's it. still it's still fun, um, and we we've gotten past the point right. where you had a guitar riff at the beginning. He used to sound like he was playing eight six seven five three zero nine. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny, who can I turn to? <laughs> but he, he's worked that out. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's Rose. That's that's uh, Rosalita. Okay. Which gets us. And I make sure I take a big breath before I do that. Well, da 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 da, because there was one where I had. I was like, I went through puberty. I went. There was one time when I think you were really drunk. Oh, sorry. Maybe. Maybe. And uh, it got to the break, and you were like in the wrong key, and just. Yeah. Uh, Playing avant garde jazz. Oh, shit. Song. I'm so. <laughs> it was like Gene Caldonado song. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it worked. It worked. Okay. Over. <laughs> Matt would yell at me when that kind of stuff uh, <laughs> But But anyway, normally we pick. So this is going to get a little sad. Normally we pick next month's song. Right. But this is it. This yeah. is the, the final episode. Right. So, um, well, how about this? If people post a song, then that means there's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? If people post a song, that means there's another episode. <laughs> like you guys should do, or yeah, like why we don't, don't talk we, about this. We song? don't talk about an episode on the comments board. There you if go. If people post a song, yeah. That means we have to oh, do okay. Episode. I'm with you. They can talk amongst so putting themselves. putting the power in their hands? Yeah. 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 Power to the people. Right on. Error. Neither progressive nor an error. <laughs> power to the people. Yeah, it's a John London song. 
Wait, right? the Lennon song? Power to the people. Yeah, what about it? I'm just saying it's a John Lennon <laughs> song. <laughs> I know. Okay, Hot bass. <laughs> I hope you bring it. <laughs> squirrel. Why are you bring that up? <laughs> What's that power song that goes? People. He said power to the people. I said right on. Okay. Oh, that was very now, good, John. Very that, quick. What's that tune? Little bit of a daddy gone. What's that called? 